hallelujah i want to use this very opportunity to thank god so much for my father in the lord <laughs> prophet prince achumanasi well come on you can do much better than this daddy thank you so much for the privilege i don't take this for granted at all thank you so much daddy hallelujah i always tell people that everything i know today i had a foundation from him it's been over 10 years ago and he's still influencing my life today i want to appreciate you again daddy thank you so much hallelujah i want to thank god so much for the life of uh, apostle victor also Mother god thank you so much hallelujah and for every man of god that is here let's appreciate everybody the protocol church workers everybody and i came here with a good friend prophet clifford nelson let's appreciate him thank you hallelujah so let me share something uh brief with you then we are going to pray tell someone we're going to pray today maybe you can title it effectiveness in prayer hallelujah now there is something about prayer i want you to understand before we pray the reason why many believers pray and they don't have results is to a certain extent that they don't understand prayer many pray but don't understand prayer and this morning i trust that god is going to enlighten you as we get prepared to pray amen now we need to understand that prayer in itself doesn't have the focus of changing things about your life the real effectiveness of prayer is prayer changing you first hallelujah the goal of prayer is not first of all to meet your need a lot of times many believers understand prayer to be going to God with your needs daily if that has been your prayer I'm so sorry for you that you cannot be able to enjoy God as, as God intends it for your life because asking God for your need is it's one of the minor prayers that makes a man praise God the goal of prayer is not also about the devil it's not first of all about the devil so first of all prayer is not about you it is not about your need it is not about the devil it is not even first of all about others so we have many people who focus about 90 percent of their prayer on the devil you cannot mature you can grow as a believer if you spend all your time in prayer dealing with the devil I want you to understand this praise God because the goal and focus of prayer is first of all on God he's the focus of prayer now the word prayer or praying is from the Greek word pro prosil komai prosil komai now the word prosil komai is from three Hebrew words which can be divided into the first of all pros now the word pros means face to face it means what face to face or before that's the word pros the word ill actually means accepted or something that is good Eo angelion which is gospel that means good news eugenia that means good woman so it's something that is good something that is accepted or something that is legal praise god then the last word is the word komai the word komai means to explore to the end it means to allocate it means to spend to the end it means to squander it all 
So when you put these three words together, which is prosu komai, prayer simply means meeting face to face with God on legal grounds to explore all that is in him. Have you seen that? So prayer is meeting face to face with God and exploring all that is in him. Prayer is meeting face to face with God on legal grounds to be able to allocate all what he has for you. So you see, prayer is beyond asking God for needs. Remember, Adam had a daily communion with God every single day. He had communion with God. And remember that Adam did not have a need. Because everything Adam needed was in the garden. So if Adam was fellowshipping with God or praying, I need to ask you a question. What was he praying about? If we are able to understand this concept of prayer, we will enjoy the riches of prayer and why God gave prayer. Prayer is first of all, walking with God. Prayer is mingling with God. Prayer is staying with God until you become like him. Prayer is fellowshipping with God. Many don't know this. So prayer is first of all a fellowship. It's you adoring him for who he is. You are not just there for need. You are staying with him. You are exploring him. When we understand this, we will, we will enjoy prayer beyond answers. Because there are answers in prayer and there are rewards in prayer. After God meets your need and he answers your prayer, what next? It's possible after having that new job, you may not have time for him again. So what God intends in prayer is beyond answering your prayer. So there are, there are answers in prayer and there are rewards in prayer. There are sometimes you pray about something for a long time. You may not have answer. But in that process, in that continuance, what is happening is that that prayer is changing you without you knowing. So it's beyond meeting the need. The prayer is now tempering with your emotions. Because the more time you spend with God in prayer, your soul is submitted to God. The more time you spend in prayer, your confidence in God begins to enlarge. Many are afraid today because they don't pray. The more time you spend with God, you fellowship and engage in intimacy with him. The more time you spend with God, you give him the platform for him to temper with your life. Listen, the first thing you do when you go into prayer is God, focus on God. Praise God. Focus on who? On God. He's the focus. You adore him. You allow him to do a heart check on you. Because there are many believers who pray. They speak in tongues so much. But they still have bitterness in their heart. So their prayers are weak and ineffective. Because God hasn't yet tempered with your hearts. So it is in prayer that God checks us. Hallelujah. So many believers don't understand the goal of prayer. If we do, how we pray will change. Hallelujah. There are three things God gave to man in the garden. You can write this down. The first thing he gave to man is breath. The second thing he gave to man is food. The third thing he gave to man was work. You can call that service. You can call that ministry. And it was work. So the first he gave to him was breath. And if man wanted to keep living, then he must respond to God's breath by breathing. If man wanted to live, he had to eat. If man wanted to accomplish God's purpose, he had to work. Follow this carefully. So man had to breathe in order to eat, in order to work. That was the process. If he fails to breathe, he will not have life to eat. If he fails to eat, he will not have strength to work. That was the process God intended it from the garden. Now, 
if Adam chose to stop breathing, it was going to affect him. How? Because he would choke himself to death. And when he chokes himself to death, he can't move. The, the, the organs of his body would not be able to function. And therefore, he can't eat and therefore he can't work. Do you know that in the New Testament, it's the same process God gave to man? When you got born again, God gave you breath, eternal life. But if you want this life to function, you must keep breathing. How do you breathe? Prayer. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible says, pray without ceasing. Do you ever cease to breathe? I'm communicating with you. Do you ever cease to breathe? You don't cease to breathe. So, you breathe without ceasing. So, if the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing, this simply means prayer is the breath of the soul of the believer. Now, this is a very important thing I'm sharing with you. Prayer is the breath of the soul of the believer. What natural breath is to the natural man, prayer is to the spiritual man. A believer who prays is a believer who is breathing. A believer who doesn't pray is a believer who is gradually choking himself to spiritual death. And I told you that when you cease to breathe, there are two things that's going to happen to you. First of all, you can function. And secondly, you begin to decay. When a believer ceases to pray or stops praying or remains prayerless, very soon he will cease to be able to function in God. There are so many things that will not function in your life when you don't pray. So many. In fact, God has appointed some people to meet you in your walk with him. You may never meet them if you don't pray. Many are experiencing spiritual death in their work with God simply because they have neglected the most important duty of man, which is prayer. Listen, prayer is the most important work any man can do for God and for man. It is. Praise God. Am I helping someone today? So, the priority of a spiritual man is prayer. The most accurate measure of the spiritual health of a man is his prayer life. Maybe let me repeat it again. The most accurate measure of the spiritual health of a man is prayer. In other words, prayer is the pulse of life. If a On his way going, the car stopped because there was no fuel. So a couple met him on the way and they, ri- they realized that he had, they had a, a little fuel in their gallon. So they gave him the fuel and then he topped up the fuel and started running or moving. So they thought he was going to stop at the next fuel station to be able to refuel so he can continue his journey. Surprisingly, because he was late, he passed by three filling stations without getting refueled. This couple on their journey met this man again on the way out of his car trying to get fuel and they passed by him and left. 
because he was not wise now unfortunately that is how many believers are we are so busy yet we forget that no matter how busy you are it takes fuel to run your car we are so busy I have work to do I'm doing my masters I have three children I have four children I, I have so much work by the time I come back I'm, I'm tired so I can't be able to pray but uh, God understands my heart hey this Christian journey runs on energy it runs on fuel there is no excuse for prayerlessness none of you here is busier than David he was a king of Israel David prayed six times he prayed three times a day in Psalm 55 the verse 17 you can check that David prayed three times a day he was a king taking care of all the 12 tribes evening and morning at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice I was shocked David also said seven times will I praise thee so David prayed three times and praised seven times where did he get the time from he was a man of war training constantly where did he get the time to pray three times and pray seven times Daniel was a politician he was a politician in Daniel chapter 6 the verse 10 Daniel prayed three times a day morning afternoon and evening I don't think you were more busier than Daniel check that now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed he went into his house and his windows being opening in his chamber toward Jerusalem he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did a full time that was his lifestyle Jesus was so busy no one was busier than Jesus he had crusades he had counseling sessions he had uh, conferences he had uh, uh, open air crusades and all kinds of meetings with people yet you read several times that Jesus will withdraw himself to pray when a crowd got so large Jesus will withdraw himself and go to the place of prayer he spends whole nights in prayer he spent all days in prayer Jesus spent time in prayer because he was busy listen because you are busy that is why you must pray Susanna Wesley had 19 children and John Wesley was one of them yes she prayed every single time not less than two hours 19 children what excuse do you have why you don't pray any excuse you give why you're not praying simply means that whatever is keeping you from prayer is an idol if it's your work your work has become an idol because 24 hours a day seven days without prayer makes one week week that's how weak you are because you don't make time to pray hallelujah I read about how these old saints have so much time to pray yet they have so much time for the work of ministry and I realized that the church is failing because we fail in the place of prayer in fact the most important preoccupation of the devil is to keep believers from praying haven't you realized any time you decide to pray that is when you begin to have more phone calls haven't you realized the day you decide to pray that is when you have running stomach haven't you realized any time you decide to pray that is when something comes up then before you realize you postpone it ah, I have good news for you it is the devil looking for you he doesn't want you to pray you know why because when the weakest believer goes on his knees hell trembles that simple prayer you can make on your lips can turn hell upside down and the devil does not want that so he's going to make sure that he's going to overwhelm you with your problems overwhelm you with challenges of life overwhelm you with the marriage so much so that you will rather choose to cry than to pray but the other day I checked my Bible in James chapter 5 verse 16 the Bible says who is afflicted or which one of you is afflicted he says let him pray he didn't say let him cry he says let him pray we got to pray as a church there are three spheres of prayer 
The first fear of prayer is united prayer or corporate prayer. When we meet like this and we pray together, that is corporate prayer or united prayer. Every believer must be involved in united and corporate prayer. The second sphere of prayer is family prayer. Every believer must pray as a family. You must pray with your children. You must pray with your husband. You must pray with your wife. It must be part of the family. In fact, a family that does not pray is like a house without a roof. Anything can enter. There are so many things people are going through today as a family simply because they did not pray as a lifestyle. Listen, if you can spend only 15 minutes with your family, your wife, your kids on a daily basis, so many things you are going through today will change. So don't be more busier than your prayer life. Then the third sphere of prayer is what we call personal, private, or secret prayer. This is how God tempers with you and changes you. Every believer must have a private prayer life. You must learn to pray alone. Jesus learned to pray alone. You must learn to pray alone. I read the other day about the Moravian brothers. These were a group of believers who decided to sell themselves into a cave and then pray for revival. They prayed for 24 hours a day. Every single day for over 100 years. How is that possible? So they were running in shifts. They, this one does two hours, they come back. The next one goes into it. This one goes to cook, they prepare. This one moves. 24 hours a day for 100 years and over. Every day. A, a group of intercessors went for an excursion in Germany to go and see the tower on which they were praying. Up till now, the glory is still there. When you, are, when you go there, you are going to fall on your feet. You can't stand on your feet. The glory is still there. I read of a man called Praying Hyde. This man could just pray. He prayed until his heart shifted from the left to the right. And the doctors told him to keep quiet for some time so that it can heal. He said, okay. When he went, he went back to pray. Samuel Chadwick died at the age of 28. He prayed until there was a time he went in a place where there was snow. He prayed until the snow on his body melted. People have prayed. I read of E.M. Bounce. He spent whole days and whole nights in prayer. This man prayed until he was 80 years old. But when you look at his face, he was 45 years old. When you look at his face, he was looking 80. People prayed. Leonard Ravenhill, he spent 14 hours with God a day. Am I saying you should do that? These people are to serve as a challenge. Because this is how they turn their stories. This is how they change their generation. And if you want to change your children, change your family, change your immediate generation, you must begin first with prayer. Tell someone, pray. pray. Hallelujah. It was the secret of Jesus. It was the secret of Apostle Paul. It was the secret of the early church. And everyone who wants to gain access to divine authority must practice the habit of praying. Ask someone, will you pray? Hallelujah. I was given a scenario the other time of what it means to pray. Listen to this. Man was designed to be aided. Man was designed a dependent being. Please follow this. Man was never created to ever live independently. He was designed in such a way that he will forever remain helpless until another who is higher than him helps him. That's how God designed man. And one of the ways of spreading our helplessness is by prayer. The greatest act of pride is prayerlessness. And I'll show you why. How many have watched wrestling before? How many have watched wrestling? Oh, few of you have watched wrestling. Okay. Can I please have four people just for an explanation? I want to do, a, I want to, uh, do an explanation. Just four people. Oh, thank you, sir. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Thank you. So, man of God, please come here. All right, man of God, please come here. Aha. Uh -huh. Yes. Now, God, please come here. 
Please come here. Uh huh. So, how many have watched tag teams champions before? Tag team, it's wrestling. It's, a part, it's an aspect of wrestling where four people are in the ring, two people come and then fight. And then, how many have watched that before? All right, so let me give you this scenario. So, please, um, you, are, you are the devil, okay? All right. <laughs> and then you are life problems, okay? You are life problems. And then, please, because you are tough, go this way. So, you are God. And then, please come. You are the believer. Please follow this. So, please go back. You are outside the ring, okay? Uh huh. So, this is the believer. No, you are, he's tall, so you are the life problems. You should be bigger than him. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, this is the believer. Amen? This is life problems, and this is the devil. Are you following? Now, in wrestling, these two people are fighting. Please try as if you are fighting. Uh huh. Good. Okay. So, let him defeat you in a way. Okay. As if you are going down. You understand? So, this is life problems. Weighing this man down. Go down. Uh huh. Oh, go, go, go. This place is okay. There's no dust here. Fall, fall down. So, this is life problems. Beating this man up. Are you following? So, he's down. Shake him a little. Uh huh. And this man wants to be free. He's tired. He's weak. He can't fight again. He has lost all his strength. There is only one solution. The only solution is to find a way of getting this man. But guess what? As you're kneeling down. If this man cries and says, help me. He can't help. He can't get any help. If he weeps and says, why me? Why am I going through all these things? What is happening to me? Why? 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 God, why? No solution. Because there are rules in wrestling. You will have to. This man will have to, have to stretch his hands, right? Then he also has to stretch his hands. And then what? Tap. tap. The moment he taps, guess what? He comes out. A higher being enters. And then it causes both life problems and the devil to bow. I hope you're getting this thing. So, this explains one of the reasons why we pray. We pray because we are helpless. And there is a God who can help because he is all-powerful, he is all-knowing, he is transcendent, and then he is infinite. So, when we pray, we are saying that because we are helpless, we are tapping to a higher being that can be able to stand into our struggles and fight for us, including the devil. So, do not pray is to say that you can go through life by yourself and you can face the devil by yourself. And that is how we lose as Christians. It's pride because God stretches his hands. He's in call. And you see, you see the line that the devil has sold to us. He tells us that um, um, if God would do what he has to do, he would do it. That's a lie. There are protocols in prayer. God can do all things, but he has determined that until men ask him, he won't do it. You must understand that protocol. Until you ask, he won't. Why? Because he gave the, gave the authority of the head to man. So man will have to invite him for him to intervene with his power. So when we pray, we are saying, God, we are helpless. We need your help from above. That is how we get God into our life affairs. This morning I see God coming in. You didn't hear what I said. I said I see God coming in. I said I see God coming in. To turn everything upside down in your life. Hallelujah. So beloved, prayerlessness is not an accident. Did you hear that? Prayerlessness is not an accident. It is a deliberate attempt to frustrate the plans of God for your life. So don't ever think that when you are prayerless, it's just an accident. You are deliberately committing prayerlessness. A believer says he does not have time, yet every 30 minutes, he replies a message on phone. Every 30 minutes, he checks how many views on his status. 
yet you haven't checked your status in heaven praise God so all the excuses we give while we are not praying are the more reason why we should pray there is always time tell someone there is always time how many hours do you have in break at work probably you have one hour break do you eat for one hour is there anybody here who eats for one hour so what do you do with your one hour break so you see you have time you can eat for 10 minutes and go and find some bungalow or go and find the back of a kitchen or go and find somewhere kneel down and pray and you will see things happening you will see things happening I know what I'm saying you begin to see things happening in your life listen on top of all your life problems on the list you know the list of your problems on the top most top of all your life problems it's not marriage it's not finances it's not a new job it's not a new car I'll tell you it is prayerlessness if you solve that problem of prayerlessness very soon you will cancel all the other problems one after the other it's that simple prayer is how we get God into the affairs of life tell someone pray when you don't pray you are disconnected from God when you don't pray you will never be able to desire for more of him when you don't pray you begin to sap your moral strength when you don't pray you are saying God I am omnipotent I can I am all knowing I can I am everywhere I can that is how can you display the greatest pride ever we must pray as a church we must pray there are three approaches to prayer that will change your life can I help you is the basic approach to prayer the first approach to prayer is what we call communion so you don't just begin prayer by just rabakata, rabakata, epakataka, epakataka. No, no 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 when you wake up in the morning or you go into God in prayer you first start by communion because like I told you prayer is not first of all about you or about the devil or about your need it's first about who God so you start by communion when I say communion I mean adoration that's number one under it adoration you begin to adore him and worship him you bless him you take your time you bless him oh as you are blessing him the holy spirit reminds you that you were offended and that offense has caused you hurt and that hurt has caused you pain and that pain has caused you hatred and that hatred has caused you bitterness and you are bitter about that man bitter about that woman all of a sudden you begin to say holy spirit i'm sorry help my heart this this is part of prayer that's like how many people are not having effectiveness in prayer because they pray asking for things when God is actually saying that listen deal with that bitterness to make your prayer potent and powerful so you begin to ask God to help you apologize to the Holy Spirit he reminds you of something you did that was not right you apologize to the Holy Spirit it's all part of communion because God is a being he's not a thing many people come to God for things and that is a mistake they do prayer is not selfish it is not selfish so you don't just come asking for things God wants to walk with you that is how come if you truly pray rightly that prayer will change you then you begin to minister to God you sing songs of praises to minister to God means that you tell God about God you bless him oh Lord Jesus I bless you you are my Lord and my God thank you for saving me Thank you for giving me the Holy Spirit. It's, it's called thanksgiving. If you read New Testament prayer, you realize that thanksgiving in prayer is said more than any other kind of prayer. So you must practice thanksgiving. Oh Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for my life. Thank you for eternal life. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Thank you for my children. You mention all their names. You thank God for them. You bless God for them. You give him praise. You thank him and adore him. It's a practice. You must learn to do it. You may not feel like doing it, but you've got to do it. Because that is what enhances your prayer. So you bless him and thank him. Can you do that in 10 seconds? Lift your hands and thank him. So many things to thank him. Thank him for everything. Thank him for your job. Thank him for your current salary. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him for your husband. Thank him for your wife. Thank him. Thank him. 
for your church. Thank him for your pastor. Thank him for the food. Thank him for the momo alert he sent you yesterday. Thank him. You are practicing his presence. You are ministering to him. Thank him. It will kill ingratitude in your heart. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. In the name of Jesus. Thanksgiving is a weapon. So, it should be part of the first things you do before you, you, you ever start praying about anything. You begin thanking him. If you begin thanking God, you are going to kill and distract ingratitude in your heart. Some of you are complaining about your salary instead of thanking God for it. Some of you are complaining about so many things you should be thanking him about. And many don't. Jesus healed 10 people. Only one came to give him thanks. He said to him, thy faith has made thee whole. Nine were healed. Only one was made whole. When you are made whole, you are not just healed. Every part of your life becomes whole again. So, it is part of prayer. Then the second approach to prayer is what we call intercession. Please note that down. You, you got to start practicing it. So the first is communion. The second is what? Intercession. It is standing in the gap for others. So long before you ever start praying for your need, you have to meet this first requirement. First requirement is God. Second is who? Others. You start praying for others. In fact, if you want to have a, a successful prayer life, you need a prayer journal or a prayer book or a diary or a small notebook. You write a list of people you got to pray about. Many of you can't pray for 10 minutes. It's simply because it's all about you. Have you ever prayed at a time when you spoke in tongues? Rabaka, rakataka, rakataka. You thought you had prayed for one hour. At the time you checked, it was only five minutes. It happened to me several times. There was a time ah, I, I prayed. Ladies and gentlemen, I prayed. I was even sweating. I checked the time, it was 15 minutes. I said, oh God. But the time comes when you understand this act. Listen, the more time you spend praying for people, the more effective your prayer life becomes. Pray for your family. I pray for my father. I pray for my mother. I pray for my wife. I pray for my son. I pray for my cousins. I pray for my aunties. They, whole, they, they all have needs that you are aware about. Surprisingly, you discuss the problem with them. You don't pray for them. Your auntie has a problem in the womb. Put her on your prayer list and pray for her every day. So pray for people. Pray for Ghana. Pray for the president. Pray for your company. Someone says, how can I pray for my company when they are giving me 400 Ghana cities? You miss the whole idea of prayer. Ask someone, how many people do you pray for per day? Amen. You pray for people. You have to pray for the sick. Their children in pain. You have to pray for them. You have to pray for people in Kolebu. You have to pray for accident center. You have to pray for labor ward. You have to pray for surgical. You have to pray for, uh, uh, you have to pray. Just pray for them. Women in labor, you pray for them. You pray for all pregnant women. You pray for the Ghana police service. You don't know they need your prayer. You pray for fire service. Says, Man of God, we are not on fire yet. Hey, pray for them. That God gives them grace to do the work they are doing to help many lives. You've got to supply prayer. Because prayer becomes the energy to which every other thing functions. So when you spend time praying for them, God begins to supply his spirit to meet their needs and help develop people. So the second is intercession. You've got to learn to pray for people. Hallelujah. Today you're going to pray for someone before you pray for yourself. Amen. You pray for people. 
The Bible says in Job chapter 42, the verse 10, he says, when Job prayed for his friends, God turned his captivity upside down. If you read from Job chapter 1 right to chapter 40, everything Job was saying was about himself. Oh Lord, why? 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 Man born of a woman is a few days. He was always, only talking about himself. When he prayed for his friends, everything turned around. Will you start praying for people now? It will change your prayer life. Sometimes by the time I'm done praying for people, probably I decide to pray for two hours. By the time I'm done praying for people, I've prayed all the two hours. When you put people on your prayer list, you realize that you, you elongate your prayer life. Amen? Number three, third approach to prayer is supplication or your petition. That is when you bring your request to God. That's when you bring your request to God. Hallelujah. So you come to God with your request, asking him for your needs. And you got to believe what you're saying. Amen. So we ask someone, will you pray? Rise up on your feet. We want to apply this thing. 